Brandon Wilson, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Thanks for having me, John. I'm excited. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be with you. I'm super excited for this conversation. Today, we're going to be focusing on leading with authenticity and transparency, um, both hugely important topics. And I think as important as they've ever been, as we've been navigating this global pandemic and everyone's been wrestling with not only the physical health components, but the mental health, the economic health, the social, societal health, all of, the, all of these factors have been at play over the last 20 plus months as organizations are trying to figure out how to be more effective uh, and take care of their people to be both productive, but also from the human side, just to, just to take care of people and help them to be fulfilled and to help them uh, to have success. As we get started, I just wanted to share Brandon's bio with everybody. Brandon Wilson is one of the world's best communicators and sought after executive consultants. His impact has helped leaders realize daring pursuits from building college campuses to addressing global wealth disparities. But more than this, Brandon is a survivor of leadership sabotage. His bout with betrayal left a a deceit, uh, excuse me, his bout with betrayal, theft, and deceit cost him more than 600000 and threatened his livelihood in an unthinkable way. Brandon's experience has taught him that despite a leader's talent level, having an inability to survive leadership sabotage can stop anyone from realizing their full potential. I'm, I'm super curious about that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to love hearing about um, your bout with betrayal, but also then focusing on the positive side, again, leading with authenticity and transparency. Uh, Brandon, anything else you would like to share with listeners by way of your background before we dive on in? No, I think you did a great job. The, the thing I do want to lead off with is that it's all positive. You know, being able to realize the power of authenticity, the power of transparency, but also the necessity of protecting your leadership gifts from sabotage is a thing that that should be viewed, all which should be viewed from a positive lens. So I look forward to being the sharer and the sprinkler of positivity for your audience, John. Oh, I, I love it. And absolutely, we can learn some of our best lessons in life come from some of those really challenging times the missteps we take, but also in the ways that some people may treat us, abuse us, exploit us, <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> um, and so, you know, life, messy life is a great teacher. Um, maybe we can start there, uh, if you don't mind sharing a little bit about, you know, your your experience with leadership sabotage. Well, yeah, I will. But before I get into that, that story, I want to double down on something you just sh- shared about uh, the things that we learn in life. You know, I believe that we are the sum of the lessons we learn from the things we've been exposed to. And there are people, there are leaders, there are influencers who only allow themselves to be exposed to a finite set of things. Uh, I, I think that in couching this conversation in a way it could be received by multiple people needs to start from a place, should start from a place of adventure that every day we wake up and every day we go to do that thing that we're passionate about or to do that thing we are curious about, we are stepping foot into a new adventure. And in that adventure are cliffs, there are rocky terrains, there are really brazen heights, there are incredible lows. But then when you go to sleep at night and you survived it all, you come out as a better adventurer, thus a better leader who has a better sense of themselves at the end of that day. And then we wake up and do it all over again. Understanding leadership sabotage is really understanding what you need to pack in your book bag, in your pockets, with the equipment you need to take with you in order to go on your daily leadership journey. You're going to get hungry. You need some beans. You need to know how to cook it. You need to know how to start a fire. You need to, you know, you need boots to get over the rocky terrain. And so my book, Sabotage, Leadership That Overcomes Betrayal, Theft, and Deceit, mines a critical leadership gap uh, in terms of giving leaders the equipment that they need to go through the full or the entirety of their leadership journey, not just the high points. If you go into the bookstore and you find a leadership book, it's probably going to talk about a couple of things. It's going to talk about resilience. 
is going to talk about how you wake up in the morning, rise and grind, work harder than anybody, be a visionary. Uh, you know, you, you, you've seen all these books on in your bookstores on Instagram or what have you. But very seldom, if ever, has there been a book that talks about how to prepare for the spook behind the door waiting to trip you up when you go to work to be resilient, rise early, <laughs> to work hard. And it's inevitable. Uh, and I shared this with another uh, buddy of mine the other day, is that sabotage, it lives wherever there is success. So whenever you want to go to be successful, you're going to have to have the equipment to navigate that adventurous terrain known as leadership sabotage. And that my book is perhaps the most comprehensive subject on, on the, uh, or, or book on the subject of sabotage. And so it's an honor to be able to write that, even though I had to go through a great deal of pain um, and empathy to gain the content within. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Well, yeah, thank you for that. Uh, and I, I completely agree. Uh, success breeds envy. Uh, you know, people are going to, you're going to draw attention to yourself. And when you draw your attention to yourself in a hyper competitive global marketplace, there, you're going to have great people who, who want to work with you and collaborate with you. And that's a huge positive, but you're also going to have people who are going to try to undercut you, uh, try to be, because, you know, people have, uh, ill-conceived notions of what success means. And sometimes they think if they tear you down, that makes them more successful. Um, and so absolutely we need to pay attention to this. Uh, so, so, oh, go ahead. I said we absolutely do need to pay attention to it. And, and the real question is, is why, before we get on the power of authenticity, uh, the, the real question is why. Why is it important to think about protecting your, your leadership gifts from sabotage as a leadership discipline? You know, because a lot of leaders probably never heard this before, even from their coaches and their leadership advisors. They probably never talk about sabotage. Uh, and the reason why it's so important is because with every promotion, with every advancement, with every growth, with every progress that you experience, you are moving to a place of mastery, to a place of vulnerability. Every single time. Moving from that small house to the big house. Moving from one city to a new city. You're going from a place of comfort to a place of discomfort. And it is in that discomfort and in that unknowing and in that vulnerability that our senses need to be its highest at its most acute point in order to quickly discern who's on our team, who's really out to support us, what fruit we really need to be eating or what information we really need to be taking and enacting and putting and executing what information we need to take with a grain of salt. And those leaders who have an ability to do that are the leaders we call wise. And those leaders who we call wise are those who have overcome leadership sabotage and also minimized it in their, in, in their environment. And they help you to do the same. You know, we call it's not being risk averse, but it's being alert enough to know how to get after a audacious pursuit uh, with this little, uh, resistance as possible. And that is, that is a gift. And the reason why it is so important for you to, to view it as a leadership discipline, because if you don't, and if you are ill prepared to face, overcome, or avoid the forces of betrayal, theft, and deceit along your leadership journey, you allow saboteurs, and sometimes that's yourself, self-sabotage is a real thing too, to rob the world of the gifts of your leadership. And there are two examples I like to give for that. You know, one is Martin Luther King Jr., who was a persistent target for leadership sabotage. Counterintelligence program, the weight of the federal government, J. Edgar Hoover, everybody said, we gotta stop this guy. Let's make him known or let's expose him to be known, even if it's false, to be a womanizer to be a man who, who is really not a family man. Let's plant moles within his organization to tail on him and it, all kinds of stuff. But if he, if he was not equipped 
with the team, the resources, and the knowledge of, to have that leadership discipline to protect his gifts from sabotage, we would lack a vision or a dream for what society can be today. And just think about the impact of that. Another example is Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs was a target and a victim of leadership sabotage. John Scully from PepsiCo was hired to run Apple while Steve Jobs worked on the, on, on the iMac. <laughs> he used that time to set up a board to essentially fire Steve Jobs from his own company. Steve Jobs himself called it an act of betrayal. But it is what happened in Steve Jobs' second act that perhaps made him the most le- one of the most legendary leaders that we know in our time. Uh, he came back, he survived that betrayal, and he honed and wielded an acute ability to quickly discern those who were for his pursuits and those who were not for his pursuits. And what he was after was not shrinking the computer. What he was really after was cr- using technology to transform the way that we engage with the world. And if he allowed sabotage to, to scuttle him, then we would be not be engaging with the world in the same way that we do today. John, you and I wouldn't even be having this moment because I'm on a MacBook Pro today. <laughs> so what I, I, I'm a have? PC. I'm a PC guy. So <laughs> the, same, but, the same is true. Yeah, but but point well taken, regardless of, of whether, you know, what kind of uh, equipment we actually use. Steve Jobs absolutely pushed the envelope in terms of user experience and design and the technologies that we use. We all use smartphones today um, that weren't even, you know, that wasn't even conceived of, I don't know, 13, 14 years ago, right? Um, And so, so very well taken that point. And, and he experienced sabotage. I think we all can probably look at experiences in our life where we've had that, um, where we've had that experience. I know I have. And Mm -hmm. It, it is painful, but you learn from it. And then from there, you can move forward. You all, you learn how to protect yourself from it, but you also learn how to avoid it in your own leadership approach, yes. right? Yes. Because I don't want to be the saboteur for others. I want to uplift and build others, right? So you learn from the bad examples of what not to do, as well as, you know, from the good examples, what you can do. Um, and two of those things that I, I would like to focus the rest of our time on that we really want to try to do, I think the best leaders do this well, is just authenticity and transparency, being true and authentic to yourself, and then being open and transparent in how you communicate with your team and giving them permission to also be authentic um, and genuine. Uh, It's a huge, huge deal. And that's going to really make a huge difference as you try to be more impactful in your leadership. Absolute permission is the word. You know, as as a leader, giving others permission and the safety needed to be their authentic selves. It's, 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 I want to hone in on, on that. And, 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 and as a segue, the reason why I believe, and studies have shown too, that the shapers of our time continue to be talked about today, looked upon, and have legacies that extend even well beyond their lives whether they be Morgan Stanley, whether they be uh, Carnegie, Rockefeller, Steve Jobs, you know, Bill Gates, whoever, right? Whoever you might see as the shaper in that sense. The reason why they are so vaunted for so long is because they are genuinely pursuing things that they're authentically passionate about. This is, this is really important. There, there is a, if you build a house of cards versus if you build a house of stones, when the wind blows, it's not easy to guess which house is going to continue to stand. It's the one that's built with a strong sense of integrity and that's built with the same elements of, on, of, on which the foundation it is built upon is made out of. And so in order to position yourself to become one of those wise, legendary leaders, impactors and shakers and shapers, the first place to start is, is understanding the power of your own authenticity. 
the Beatles sang about things that they authentically were passionate about, and we played it today. Jay-Z talks about, raps about things he is authentically connected to and passionate about, and his music will go on to the end of the time, because authenticity is a superpower that, in my opinion, is not utilized enough of. And even if it is utilized, saboteurs sometimes find a way to use their own authenticity to shut the authenticity of others down, which in my opinion is a limiting effect. And so I want to share with your audience a skill for what once you tap into your own authenticity, creating a workplace culture that gives people permission to do the same. And it is a leadership approach called distributive leadership, or as I like to define it as the acme of leadership, which is unlocking the power of collective impact. As leaders, it is important for our own impact and for our own legacies to not only be authentic, authentic with our own and true to our own passions, but to also have really candid open discussions about the pursuits, the passions, and the things that those who work for us and around us bring to work with them every day. And then connecting them to those things. Connecting, what you will instantly see is you need to motivate less. People will be excited about being a stenographer. If they are genuinely passionate about about listening and, uh, and, 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 and capturing moments in history. There are some people who may be passionate about building. So instead of bringing them a project at the end, invite them at the beginning of the meeting and say, we want to build something great here. I want your insight and your help. And so whenever you sort of learn what people are authentically passionate about, even around you, you position yourself to be a better leader by connecting those you lead with the things that they are passionate about. And what you all you need to do then is hitch on their wagon, empower them and get out of the way. <laughs> and their collective impact will take you to a place where you will soar to legendary heights. Yeah, very, very well said. Um, and, and how do you connect in the idea of transparency into this authenticity? Well, transparency is a, uh, it's tough. It's a, it's a tricky subject because transparency is, is erroneously talked about in the, with the same type of candor as vulnerability. And I don't think they're that, I don't think they're the same thing. So the first thing is we need to change the way we view transparency. I don't think by being transparent, you make yourself more, more vulnerable. Uh, I think you, by being more transparent, you actually provide people access to your knowledge, your experiences, and your your and and your your wisdom in a way that's almost an, it's synonymous with an open door policy, uh, and, and it is actually a superpower. The reason why we fail to be transparent, and then I'll get to a place of of tapping into your own transparency. The reason why I think we, we are not as willing to be transparent is a very simple thing. I think we take ourselves too serious. I think we take ourselves too seriously. And we believe that just as we t protect our money, we need to also protect our, our wisdom and our, and our lived experiences and our knowledge. And it's not that valuable. <laughs> And so as an exercise, if you're, if you're listening to this, if you're in your home and if you're in your car, if you are in your room listening to this podcast right now, I want to challenge you to do something that will absolutely give you the first stone needed to become a more transparent leader. I want you to stop what you're doing. I want you to say aloud to yourself, I'm not that good. And I'm going to pause and let your audience say it. I am not that good. You're going to say, this guy is limiting me. That's self-defeating. That's a self-limiting thought. But I want to describe to you what you just did if you did that. If you didn't do that, you take yourself too seriously. If you did do that, 
I will share with you the power that you just tapped into. What you just tapped into is an ability to pause every time an opportunity for progress, promotion, advancement, or difference is presented to you to view that opportunity, advancement, and promotion with clear eyes, not with an ego statistical lens. When that real pretty girl looks at you, you need to say to yourself, hold on, I'm not that good. Just that beat, just that moment. Now you may, after that two seconds, you may say, I am that good. Before that two seconds, you allowed yourself to, to really be clear in asking the question, why is it that she's attracted to me? Why is it that that employee wants to work at my company? Why is it that of all other people around the world, I'm being selected for this global board of directors? And it allows you the clarity needed to advance in a very powerful way, in an acute way, and avoid just saying yes to everything that's given to you because it becomes less about you. And once you get to a place of not taking yourself too seriously, then you are more open to saying, hey, what else is there that people want to know about me? And people will start saying, man, that is brilliant. Why have you been hiding that from me? I didn't know you used to work on a farm and that you knew all about the irrigation processes. I thought you were just a corporate exec for your whole life. <laughs> so start sharing your life with other people and it becomes easier to do that once you realize that we, we, we are just winning and skiing. Like we're not, we're not all that. And if you need one more bit of encouragement to stop taking yourself too seriously and to be more transparent, it is this idea that relationships are the spice of life. And the only way we develop really intimate, important, ingrained, uh, consequential relationships, and dare say friendships with others, is when we start allowing people access into our lives, our knowledge, and our wisdom. And the more you close yourself off, the less relationships you have, and the more life just becomes about work, and then you die. Think about yeah. that. Yeah. Brandon, it, so many wonderful insights. <laughs> it, it has just been a pleasure. I know at the time, and I need to let you go here in just a moment, but we've really just scratched the surface, and there's so much more that we can talk about. You're invited back. You can come back on any time, and we can continue the conversation. But before we close for today, I just wanted to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can get connected with you, find out more about your work, your team, your book, and then give us a final word on the topic for today. Absolutely. If you are a leader and you are a part of a conference or an organization, you want a speaker, you can go to brandonwilson.co. That is brandonwilson.co. You can book time on my calendar. You can learn more about me, but you also can buy the book, Sabotage, Leadership That Overcomes Betrayal, Theft, and Deceit. It is the most comprehensive study on leadership sabotage and self-sabotage, and it gives you the tools to clearing your leadership runway so that your plane can get maximum speed and reach the maximum height that you were built to achieve. Very well said. Thank you, Brandon. It was a pleasure. I encourage listeners to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Brandon and his team can do for you. Check out his book. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week.